If you enjoy movies, comic books, and pop culture, be sure to like and subscribe. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast. Brah! To you by REC Comics and Collectibles. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always... Eric Icarus. Eric! What's up, Mike? You can find us on the gram at REC Podcast. You can follow myself at Roman REC Podcast. You can follow the shop at REC Comic. You can come visit us at 7679 North Union Boulevard in Colorado Springs. Uh, and you can check out the big tuna on the ones and twos to my left, possibly your right, or up and down, wherever you're watching the show. How are you doing this week, Tuna? I'm pretty good. Uh, <laughs> definitely kind of weird, interesting news this week. Uh, uh, nothing really big movie-wise in terms of news, uh, but we got a full packed show. I'm really excited to get Ooh, to it. packed. Packed. Well, I'm, I'm going to start with a little flowers, a little, a little, little kudos. Make I love some flowers. Mix, 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 mix flowers. <laughs> um, Spider-Man Homecoming is on Disney Plus now, following the Toby 3. They only did Andrew Garfield's first one. They also added Venom, which I don't even think I'm going to watch for free. No, who you know? I mean, uh, like, well, it does have an audience, but it's not poop. -poo it's it. not for me. It's not, it's for, not me. for you. Uh, it's but for the D-bags. Spider-Man's... Uh, <laughs> It's not poo poo it, you D-bags. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming, if you have not taken the time to rewatch it, it is still yeah. so solid. Okay. I forgot how much I... Re I mean, I, I loved it, but Keaton's bat is great. Uh, getting some Tony Stark. Uh, Tom Holland's fantastic. Happy Hogan. It's just a great watch. Sure. If you've got time, you should go back and rewatch those types of movies. They, they It, it has already ha has a nostalgia to it, and right. it's not very old. No, no, it's really not. I mean, it's crazy how much the universe has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, actually getting to see Tony be the uh, be, fulfill the father role, mm -hmm. and then we know where it ends up. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it is uh, that nostalgia pop uh, for <laughs> for all of us. You yeah, know? yeah, it it, it is. Uh, it's worth a rewatch. There's a lot of cool, just like MCU stuff in there. Just a lot of great Peter Parker story building, big time. Yeah. And I feel like it's the first time they actually did it right with the high yeah. school uh, aesthetic yeah. to it. Now him going to college yeah. and being in the center of high school, mm -hmm. so and being and super into black chicks. So. Sure, I can um, dig it. There's hey, we've never, we've never seen awesome. that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that is kind of. I did kind of like the spin a little bit. You uh, know, uh, because yeah. Liz too. They have Liz as, as, as uh, black, and then and then obviously in the later movies he's with MJ. Right, but. Uh, yeah, man. I yep. think that's... Uh, and he's not going back. He's not. He's never going back at least <laughs> to the MCU. Um, That'd be funny if, like, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man were like, ooh. <laughs> we ain't down with that, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not in this Where's universe. your uncle? Yeah. <laughs> Where's your old white uncle? Where's, Where's your, your uncle? Yeah. Well, you know, that? in that universe, it's Uncle Tom. Ah, <laughs> not Uncle Ben. Is, there it is. Uh, yeah, rice versus everything nice, okay? Um, the... Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy is just trucking along, Volume 3. Uh, it is giving us a bright spot in the MCU. We've done, done nothing but, but speak uh, good about it. Big Tuna has some fun numbers for us this week. What's going on in the world of box office reporting? Yes, absolutely. Um, as someone who has their finger on the pulse of this nation, I can <laughs> tell you there's nothing people like more than math. So, so much math. looking so much at math. the, I crunched the numbers uh, by by googling the <laughs> title googling the numbers of the movie. I <laughs> googled the numbers, and uh, yeah, I got some interesting tidbits. So right now, as it stands, Guardians has wrapped up its second uh, had second weekend. It did have uh, a less than fifty percent drop week Oof. to week, which is the first no, time great. that's happened for an MCU movie in five years. That's great. The fact that it didn't have such a significant drop off that it fell off less than fifty percent, oh, okay. I think, great. is uh, the tale of two things. Number one. It's a good story, and number two, it's got a lot of good talk. People are talking about liking it, wanting to go see it. I think you get some of the people that were hesitant to go see it the first weekend. Now they're showing up to it. So here's the the current numbers as they're slated from Box Office Mojo. Uh, the the entire uh, release. So we're talking domestic in the U.S. and international markets. Um, again, this is all standardized to U.S. dollars. We're looking at so far Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which again is two weeks out from its release. Oh, thanks. It is at $536 million. Mm. It's half to a bill already. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two now, weeks. again, when we look at some of these big release movies, 
there's kind of been a sense of like, you know, like, okay, everything makes a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Aquaman made a billion dollars in these things. But there are some things I think we need to pay attention to. So the the, the two things I would like to compare, and I, I consider this to be an apples to apples comparison. The first thing I'm going to compare Guardians to uh, is something maybe a little bit more removed. Maybe it's like a Fiji to a Gala apple. I don't really know my, <laughs> I don't really know my apples very well. Um, I'll tell uh, you. <laughs> and, that, yeah, uh, and that is Shazam Fury of the Gods. Shazam Fury of the Gods is the most recent DCU product to uh, have a theatrical release. Uh, it, it has finished. Uh, it's now on the streaming platforms. Um, <laughs> and uh, did it finish or did it never begin? Mm -hmm. So uh, here's the numbers. Again, box office mojo. We're, we're talking domestic and international gross. Again, keep in mind this movie came out earlier this year. <laughs> we're not talking about something from a year ago. A couple months ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're talking February. Yeah. Um, so, so here we go. Ready? Let's play a game. I'm oh curious. My gosh. Here's, a, here's what it. we're gonna do. So I mean, we're gonna get a. We'll, we'll kind of prices right this. All right. So so Eric yes. and Roman, I want each of you to give me a round uh, number. Again, this is gonna be Shazam: Fury of the Gods, entire box office take. So U.S. international markets. Uh, Eric, let's get your number first. Okay. What do you think Shazam made at the box office total? Total. And I'm gonna go for four hundred thirty mil. 430 million. 430 million. So $430 million from Eric. Roman, if you say $1, I'm going to be angry. I <laughs> yeah. never like those people. Um, yeah. I'm going to say between 150 and 200. If you make me narrow it down, I'll just say 175. Oh, God. I, I think it was, I think it did terribly. And yeah, that's that's what I think. I feel better going that high then. Okay, right, so I'm just it to out. recap, so we'll go with the 175 number for Roman because again, it's kind of the happy, it's kind of the Goldilocks with his guess. 430 is where Eric's going. <laughs> Both of you overestimated Shazam: Fury of the Gods at the box office. This is unreal, but this is true. Box office mojo, Shazam: Fury of the Gods, entire box office take. U.S. international markets, $133 million, okay? It had a $57 million domestic run. 43% of its money, okay? So we're talking about uh, just under half. Uh, $57 million uh, from the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, $133 million. I didn't even go that high. That's for, funny. For a sequel to an established yes. franchise from DC yeah. with a returning cast, virtually. I mean, there was a few changes uh, with the family, and it had a new villain. And, you know, it had, uh, you know, had a dame here. It had a, a Lucy here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, again, uh, an absolute box office failure. Yeah. We wouldn't even call this a bomb. Yeah. Like, a no. bomb no, no. A bomb causes some, some footprint left behind. Right. This is a... Uh, yeah, this is a dust devil. This is a <laughs> this is something it's here and gone. It's like Kaiser Soze in the third act. But none none of us watched it, right? No, no, no. no, no. no. And no. apparently that's neither did have. anyone else. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. One hundred thirty three million dollars for Shazam. So now again, let's put that into perspective. Guardians of the Galaxy has been out for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So let me give you Guardians domestic so far. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. And its two-week run has already made two hundred nineteen million dollars. That is almost double. Right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry. No. Okay. So, so that is almost double what Shazam did in its entirety. Yeah. But in terms of domestic, we're talking about four times the amount of money Guardians has made in two weeks than Shazam made in the U.S. entirely. Yeah. Good lord. And that guy is leaving to go work at DC. Yeah. So. So, uh, oh, and it's crazy know. because the, the first Shazam made 360 mil. So, yeah, half of that crap uh, for the sequel. So nobody wanted to go see this. That's so right. Nobody rare. wanted to but see this. But the first one was bad. I, I, I didn't it did. enjoy it. It was bad. So, yeah, you're right. It, 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 does, it doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't, oh, it actually does shock me a little bit. I, I went too high. I went way too yeah, high. I yeah. thought at least with international numbers, it went maybe like that. Yeah. Top what, tapped out at 430. What was Ant Man and the Wasp? Do we have any numbers on that? Um, I, so, so, uh, so the other, the other movie I want to compare it to is Ant-Man and the Wasp okay. Quantumania, because that is the most recent MCU release. Yeah. Again, that came out, uh, uh, you know, March, uh, so yeah, March. Uh, so same general time frame, if you will, as, as Shazam. Uh, but this was supposed to be, this is the big kickoff, right? It's phase five. We're getting uh, Kang as a villain. It was big in the marketing. Like this is going to be, I mean, they were up front that this movie was going to kick off this, this new phase is going to culminate in Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. Um, uh, and so all the press around it and these things, here we go. Gentlemen, 
I'm going to get your guess. Oh, We're going to do this again. All right. Now, again, this is Ant-Man Quantumania, which has finished its theatrical run. It is releasing on Blu-ray and uh, other physical media this week. Um, it's, sh- it's soon going to be on, uh, I think, in the next like two weeks. I think it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. It's going to be coming out pretty soon. Um, so, to watch um, so some of you will be getting to watch that for the first time on Disney+. Plus. So here we go. We're going to get our guesses. Oh, okay. As a reminder... As a reminder, Guardians in two weeks worldwide has made five hundred thirty-six million dollars. Okay. So, gentlemen, I want your again total box office gross. Eric will have you go second. Yes. Because Roman definitely was closer. I will say entire run four hundred and fifteen million. Four hundred fifteen million. All right, Eric. Million. I'm gonna keep mine right around. I'm gonna go four hundred mil. Four hundred. Nice round number. All round right. number. All right. So here's what I'll tell you. Both of you are within the same hundred million dollar range. Okay. Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Media's total worldwide box office gross four hundred seventy five million dollars. Oh, okay. Hey. Okay. okay. Now, now Not again. Bad. Not bad. Uh, again, I think it's it's fair to compare these three movies because yeah. of a couple of things. Uh, Guardians is a sequel. Ant Man's a sequel. Shazam's a sequel. Right. Okay. All three of these movies have come out in the same general time frame. Obviously, Guardians is a May movie. We're talking about February, March, and May for these three releases. So. I think the the Venn diagram of these three movies, I think there's a fair amount of overlap. Mm -hmm. I think that of the very few people that went and saw Shazam, I would almost guarantee that they went and saw Ant-Man and and saw Guardians of the Galaxy. But I think the numbers are bearing out something that I think might be concerning for Marvel. DC has known that they've had issues with their product. Uh, You've got underperforming movies. You've got uh, failure to launch certain... Uh, uh, you know, franchise and these things. They're uh, the the DC World's TV universe has never been coherent. Even when they've tried to create it symmetrically with uh-huh. Arrow and Flash, both of those ended as duds. Uh, Flash is, is currently wrapping up its run. Titans just ended as well. Um, Gotham Knights. Uh, there's even talk that it might get shelved. Okay. Uh, and like before, it's like release. Uh, like there's a lot of concerning points there. What I'm concerned about with Marvel, and we can have this conversation um, and, and kind of take it in this direction, um, I, I think generally speaking, there was a lot of people that were not happy uh, critically, fan-wise, with Ant-Man. It didn't feel like a big kickoff of a phase. It, I think it lost a lot of heart of what people liked from the characters. Uh, it didn't feel like the big kickoff event that it was being billed as, right. right? Guardians 3, it's the culmination of a trilogy. We've seen this family formed. I think uh, in previous episodes, uh, I know I suggested it, I think uh, the others did too. Like, I was not concerned with Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, I felt like Gunn was going to give us a good movie, and he gave us a good movie. The next Marvel product coming out is going to be The Marvels. It's a sequel to a movie that probably in the the MCU fans is probably in the bottom three. Um, a lot of fans didn't care for Eternals. A lot of fans were you know pretty unhappy with uh, you know Thor, uh, The Dark World, and Thor: Love and Thunder. And a lot of MCU fans didn't care for Captain Marvel. And now we're getting a Captain Marvel. Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, uh, amalgamation. Um, Monica Rambeau, Photon. And, and, yes, and, and <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. Uh, and, and so the question is, Is are the Guardians audience going to show up for the Marvels? Um, uh, honestly, it depends on how much space stuff they do. I think, I think that if they're smart and we get spoilers, three, two, one, an Adam Warlock appearance, a Rocket appearance, because Rocket and... Uh, Cap- uh, and and uh, Captain Marvel seem to have like a fun like, back, yeah, yeah, and yeah, back and forth. Sure. Um, so there there is uh, there is the ability, even if it's just like communicating, letting like each other know what's up. Game. Yeah, like yeah. oh hey, we need something, whatever. Like you're gonna have a little bit of that, but right. I just don't. It's not the same audience. It's uh, it's not established and follow through. The character I'm most excited to see is Monica Rambeau. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and she's the one who's had the least amount of screen time. Right. So um, I don't know if, if that bodes well. Does that for make her or you not. more excited because you don't know enough about her? Yes. Because you're more yeah. excited to see where they take her. Because we, I think we've already tapped out as far as maybe Carol Danvers and Kamala Khan. The the I was telling a customer today actually that like. You know, the the three things I knew were going to happen in Guardians 3, the three things I was positive were going to happen, 
did not happen. So I was happy. And I was, it's hard for me to be surprised. I know, I don't know as much about Photon as I knew her as, or I'm, I'm sorry, as, as, this, as Spectrum, really. Right, right, right. As, uh, as I know of Photon and her, and her Captain Marvel days. But uh, her character was interesting. Mm -hmm. I love the built in, like, we get the, uh, like, where, where were you when mom, mom was died, gone, was yeah, dying, and yeah. all that stuff. So, there is there's a lot more to peel back and a lot more to be revealed about that particular character. No, I agree with you on that. Absolutely. Um, when did Black Panther come out? Wakanda Forever. It, it, does anybody remember? That was last May. That was last what, May. Wakanda Forever or November was November. Was yeah, November. Yeah, November. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, we're leading up to this. I mean, you know, it's crazy how we got this one bright spot in this just void yeah. almost because i don't see the marvels doing very well yeah uh just mainly because what you're saying we've talked about it before the backlash from the first movie because of uh brie larson uh -huh. um i don't think she's done enough to um gain a lot of fans favor in yeah. the last four years or however long it's been since captain marvel yeah um i think it was there was a lukewarm reception to uh ms marvel uh -huh. so i yeah i don't see this going anywhere yeah i think he said i think the only way we get kind of a bump is like you said if we get a rocket appearance yeah. or anything tied to the guardian which would easily be done because yeah. of the space thing they got mm -hmm. going there. But um, I, ah, I'm with you, man. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I, yeah, I'm, I'm down to see Monica Rambo. I, I'm excited for that. Um, even the trailer, like watching it back, yeah, it's exciting, but yeah, it didn't give me the, the oh my God, yeah. here we go. Because if two of the three things in there, you're not really interested in at all. No. So um, what's interesting is that there had been this, uh, in the comic book world, there had been these um, solicitations in title only for Fallen Friend. Um, we knew that it was going to have something to do with Spider-Man, so we're like, oh gosh, Peter Parker's going to die, or <laughs> Again. whatever. But, spoilers, kids, because we've just seen some cover uh, art, it appears to be Kamala Khan mm -hmm. is going to be dying in comics. Okay. Um, whether that is going to have any type of uh, right. bearing on what happens in this film, I mean, it could. It could. This could be a, a light setup to prepare us for, for the death of Kamala Khan. It would be the first time we killed a young Right, hero. Right. Go, yeah, you know what? We could say we could set this phase as take no prisoners. Yeah, almost. I mean, gives it a set, yeah, I would be very interested to see yeah. that. Um, so it, it was just something that kind of came up in my feed today. I started seeing some some finished art. So right. um, that's an interesting thing that we'll have to come back to at another time. Does she go? Does she get the seventy two virgins? Uh, no, she does not. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I'm pretty sure the 72 virgins were the people that went and watched Shazam Fury. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point, too. That's true. <laughs> uh, Marvel does have some more uh, Disney products coming up. We know that Nick Fury is going to be in the Marvels, but also in June we're going to have Secret Invasion yes. finally. Yes, uh -huh. Feels very, looks very different, feels very different from any other Marvel uh, product. And today, or yesterday, they uh, Disney announced that both Loki and... And uh, season two and Echo season one are going to release be released this year. Right. Um, do you have any dates on that, Big Two? Yeah. So uh, Loki season two, which is billed by Kevin Feige as being the the first ever second season of a uh, Disney Plus show. So they're they're trying to kind of hit this off that like the big first season was a success. We're moving forward here. Um, uh, the uh, they announced that the season two premiere, and this is important, the premiere of the season is October sixth. They did not stipulate how many episodes are going to be in the run. A lot of reporting suggests maybe eight or so. Yeah. Here's why this is interesting. The Echo series that was also announced today, Marvel pretty much did a tweet, and they pretty much said, this is coming out this time, this is coming out this time, and that was kind of their announcement. Echo uh, will be releasing all episodes. So they're doing a, a drop. Oh, uh, they're gonna Netflix that uh, month, November November 29th. So October 6th to November 29th. If we're talking about eight episodes, I mean that's gonna put Loki right up to the release of, of Echo. And not to be forgotten, the uh, the premiere of Loki in October is also going to conflict with the Sony announced release date of the Craven film. Yes. I'm wondering if maybe just maybe. Disney knows something Sony doesn't. It could be that they they did seem to have pretty good response to their CinemaCon footage. It might be that that Sony might be looking to move the Craven release, and so Disney's coming out saying our show, which is uh, which is already in the can, it's already wrapped. Wow. Uh, Loki season two. This is going to come out now at this time in October, anticipating a possible move. 
again, it could also be Disney and Sony are not the same company. No. They might share certain properties. They might play nice here and there, but ultimately it's about getting eyes on their product. So th that would also be an interesting theory as well. Yeah. Uh, you're the you're Sony in this in this <laughs> Disney and Sony, you know. <laughs> oh my God! I uh, I, did, I I mean, because w w did we have a, a Marvel show this year already, or or a Secret Invasion the first one? Secret Invasion will be the the first uh, show of 2023. Okay, okay cool. Right. So so we're gonna get three shows. Two of them I'm very excited about, and even though I love the character of Echo, right. I don't know that she's earned a show off no, of that appearance. I really don't either. Um, it, very it's strange. Ve it's very strange. I mean, in the comics, they well, gave just her the, the dump too. Is yeah, strange. the dump is. That's really what's weird. getting me. The old phoenix dump. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's a phoenix in comics. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I. That's what's scaring me a little yeah. bit for for, Mar for Marvel's sake. Maybe it's a test, oh, just to see if, think, huh? just to see, hey, does it? Will we get the binging thing, or hey, this is only good they if you like watch it right serialized after, yeah. one after another yeah. every week, Man, or it's I, so good they're like, we got we got to put it all out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. So good, yeah. <laughs> they won't be able to wait. They may hurt e themselves if not each other. Right, they, right. Then, well, we can then, speculate on Echo a little. Yeah. Do you think we may get, get a Matt Murdock? Yeah. I think we get it. I think Vin that's the only thing Vincent, that spikes it. Vincent D'Onofrio and Charlie C uh, Cox are both listed as cast members. There we go. There so you go. I, okay. I, I, okay. it could be a little thesis because remember we are getting like a twenty episode run of Daredevil: Born Again. Uh, right. Um, and so this could be yeah, it could be launching that. Um, something else to keep in mind too uh, is that two other Disney Plus announced shows do not currently have a release date, and that is going to be Ironheart, uh, the show that no one asked for, uh, <laughs> spinning off of the character we saw introduced. Uh, um, erratically in Black Panther we're kind of forever um, and Agatha Coven of Chaos oh, yeah. which I was spinning off for. from yep. WandaVision so neither of those uh, have a release date many people feel that because of the uh, the issues that Marvel has had with their post-production those shows are both post-production heavy mm -hmm. that that oh, likely yeah. is what moved them to 2024 and we got to remember that the writer strike is going on. Oh, oh yeah, um, dude, that's right. There are things that 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 will get a weird effect of that depending on how long it goes on for. Um, but the, during the last one, we did notice it in film and uh, yes, uh, just in quality. But these things that were shelved, I mean, this may be Marvel uh, getting ahead of that and being like, well. There's a chance we're gonna have a delay in in releasing Lots some products, things now, yeah. so we need to push these shows out. And then also, we don't need five Marvel shows. No, in one year. They, see, they feel like they failed with that because they gave us too much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe this writer strike's a blessing. It could be because it, it yeah. scales back things mm -hmm. a, a tad bit for that. Yeah, because um, I know that that uh, things have stopped. Uh, certain writing things have stopped on like Deadpool three, and they're no right. longer allowing uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds to just. Improvise lines while he's uh, while the strike is going on. Right, right, right. So there are you know the, the, these things do have ripple effects. Of course, um, yeah. And we're gonna see it in the product, but Marvel might might be in a weird, weirdly um, uh, safe position because they've already had a bunch they of have stuff a going, and yeah. they need to fix some post production stuff. So maybe this gives them the time that they to need. actually yeah fix a lot of the uh, issues maybe a blessing, that we're having. Maybe a blessing in the skies, as some people say. Hey, I like it. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I am excited for Agatha. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I like yeah. the character in Wanda Vision. Yeah. Um, I like that actress, even though I, I can't remember. I her always name. forget her Catherine name. Catherine Hahn. Oh go. my God! <laughs> Got it. <laughs> but Ironheart, I, I'm talking about another character that just didn't <clears throat> earn a show. Yeah. You know, this feels a bit more like, oh, here you go. Here's your new heroes. Yeah. You're going to like them. Yeah. You know what needed a show? Eternals, guys. We keep talking about it. I'm not going to be done with it. I like the movie. Uh, we. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I know. I, I, I got. I got a little serious. On a on a less serious note, uh, Fast X guys, Fast X, Fast Ten, coming at you. Is there is there truth to the to the to the the ten being split into two uh, like three films total? Is that is just a rumor? During the uh, during the red carpet appearance, it was it was dropped that that. Uh, Fast 10 was going to be essentially one part of the ending trilogy. So <laughs> it's leading many people to believe that an 11 and 12 will follow. Um, probably this movie will end on... Uh, I, I have like I don't even want to talk about it, honestly. Like We got to drive it, to the it, sun. Yeah, I, I was going <laughs> to say, it, this whole thing is going to end with uh, someone 
going so fast on like a, a land speed record, they're gonna rip through time. They're gonna go backwards and they're gonna like reboot this whole franchise in a few years oh, uh, and God. save Barry's well, then, uh, mom's life. That, that's cool. Because <laughs> then what they could do, they could crash right into Paul Walker. So that oh, way they don't have you know that's, that's, that's time. Why, yeah. Oh, my so that's gosh, why he doesn't have to be in wow. the. They go back in time. You they yeah, can. That's yeah, how they write him out. Yeah, and that's like, why. Vin Diesel it crashes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Toretto is like he's got the shop. For yeah. doing such a thing. Yeah, right. You know? I killed him. Uh, oh, my brother. I killed maybe, my family. Maybe they could go back in time and like hire uh, an acting coach for Vin Diesel. Mm. No, I like he's, him. I like him terrible. You can't teach that, all right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's just, instinct. That's instinct. You're just man. born with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this I saw a great tweet where somebody just replied to this post with, please stop making these movies. People watching. They can't stop. Which won't then, stop. Can't uh -uh. stop, won't uh -uh. stop. Yeah, the but it led to a, a very fun internet question that we've all been asking ourselves internally, but never out loud. <laughs> At what point in the Fast and Furious franchise did you guys find that it lost its connection to reality? Um, Jordan, I know you have famously only seen three of the films. I yeah, actually the first movie I saw was Tokyo Drift. Oh I my god. Bad. I then went so back. So it was all uphill from there. I, I went back. I went back and watched one and two, um, and uh, yeah, I uh, it, it just absolutely painful. It, it was one of those things where um, moving forward after three, I'm like, I don't see any interest in wanting to know any more of the story of any of these characters. <laughs> I I, abs I absolutely lost the taste for it. But family and Dom and not and whatnot. <laughs> Dom, yeah. <laughs> but but so so that tweet about like what moment did it lose you? Um, was just rife with people's uh, video clips mm -hmm. or descriptions of certain scenes that then other people posted video clips. I spent probably almost an hour going through those tweets, and my God, the stuff that I saw, it was it was shocking. It was like it was like 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 early like spring 1945 liberating Eastern Europe. Shocking. Jesus like, Christ. The, the stuff like. I, like, if you told me that a movie, a successful movie franchise, was going to feature characters in a car in space... Space car. ...going after, like, a satellite or something, the number of clips of Vin Diesel propelled out of a vehicle while it explodes, just the probability in and of itself would eventually lead to his death. Probably the one thing that I saw that was most offensive to my sensibilities... <laughs> As a human being and as an American, I believe it was maybe in the the ninth installment, or as I like to call it, the ninth circle, um, mm. featured Vin Diesel and uh, uh, oh, what's her name, um, Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I couldn't tell you who'd win that arm wrestling. <laughs> they're driving. They're always being shot by helicopters. These people have terrible aim. She says uh, a bigger stick shift. They went to the Stormtroopers I, Academy. I can't them. imagine how clean the floors are in their bathroom. So, <laughs> so they're they're in a car. They're being shot at by helicopters. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez's character says what everyone's thinking, and that is, "There's no bridge up there. Like the bridge is out. There's no bridge there," which leads him to accelerate, which is not the natural human response one would have. He ends up uh, Dom. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dominic Toretto. Do God yeah. damn. His friends call him Dom. So Dominic's driving this Man, we're car, no friends and he, he turns the wheel in such a way that the rope, presumably where a bridge once had been, uh, is captured by the wheel well of the vehicle. They then are propelled through a canyon like Tarzan on a rope. With a car. Le yes, to the point then where by turning the wheel the opposite way, the car releases from the rope. And I, I just, it, it was instant. It was instant. It was, it was instantly radicalizing. Physics, kids. Like, yeah. it, like honestly, it was one of those things where it's like, I would be so angry if that was the moment that got for me, and I sat through eight of those. <laughs> I think that's a metaphor for the entire franchise. Yeah. The driving, the bridge is out. That means there's no story left. No. And they're like, you know what? We're gonna get really stupid with this, what? and you're gonna love it. How many of them have you seen? I just seen the first three. Oh, okay. You've seen the first three. Okay. So all three of us have only seen three. Jeez. Oh, okay. Oh, I've seen one, three, and five. 
Okay. Okay. So yeah, we're completely talking out of pocket to, well, to an extent, but we're asking at what point did they did it did it uh, you know uh, you know become too ridiculous? Right. Do you have a moment that you saw in in any of them that that sticks? Well, I mean, head? when it lost touch with the reality is when Tokyo Drift when the um, Asians weren't driving super slow mm. with the blinker on. That, see, lost me lost me completely. Uh, that's not re that's not reality. And for me, it was in Tokyo Drift as well, <laughs> but from a practical standpoint, okay. <laughs> Um, I don't know anything about cars. I'm not a car guy. I have friends who are car people, and I pick up things, and I listen to things. And the fact that not Paul Walker in there, I don't know his name, uh, is driving, not just driving, but drifting. Remember, it's called Tokyo Drift, which implies a lighter vehicle, uh, being able to take sharp turns, smaller in many cases, especially in Japan because of how the roads are sure. and the population. Yeah. But the main character is drifting very easily a muscle car, some type of Charger or Mustang, something very heavy, something not made to take those types of turns. And I was like, come on, man. I Now, I watched it because I had to work. I was working. I put it together. I had to preview it. And gosh, I mean, if, if I could get paid double time for anything, that would have been it. But uh, yeah, that was where I was like, okay, these aren't for me. The only thing that got me back was The Rock. And that one with The Rock was all right, except for the part where they, uh, uh, two Dodge Chargers take a big safe mm -hmm. out of a Brazilian bank right. and like presume, then proceed to like drive it around, whipping it around at bad guys as they're trying to mm. drive it out of the mm -hmm. out of the city. That sounds really stupid. <laughs> it's really yeah, it's really stupid. It sounds like it took the premise of point break. Point Break is the and first one. It's great. It, infused it with uh, the Italian job. Yeah. With a, <laughs> hold on, a with hint of ass. ass hint of you know? ass, of course. Um, um, so the first yeah. one I like. The first one is, is it's because, point break. because it's Point Break. And Point Break is bad and awesome too. Right. Um, you know, it doesn't have a, what's his name? Swayze. Swayze. Kurt Kananu Reeves. <laughs> Kananu. Anthony Kiedis. Anthony oh, Kiedis yeah. playing a surfer punk. There you course. go. Getting shot in the foot. Yeah. It's good times. It's good times. Um, friend of the show, Dave is really weird about Fast and the Furious. Does he like it? He watches all of them. Fair enough. He has a lot of things that he wants to say about them, but he, he won't admit to us that he's a fan. It's like, dude, you've watched you all watch of them. them. Yeah. You're going to watch 10 A, B, and C as Even well. Even if you say you ironically like them, you still like them. Yeah. It's fine. They're a guilty pleasure it's, for It's you. totally cool. Yeah, they're a guilty no pleasure for you. I'm trying to think of, do I have a guilty pleasure trilogy? It's uh, uh, The Matrix. Mm. First one's great, obviously, mm -hmm. right. but then I, I will watch two and three if I watch one. Oh, really? Every time. <laughs> Every time. What about four? Um, that hasn't made its way. It's like it's like Indiana Jones four. You know, like mm. it's no, not, that's a good I thing. only yeah. rewatch the Indiana Jones trilogy. I don't watch four. So um, <laughs> I didn't watch Fast and the Furious four, which was I don't know. Fast four. Fast four. Forever. Fast yeah. forever. It was probably something like that. Too fast. Too it forever. Would be such <laughs> stupid, dude. One of the clips was a, a, a sub <laughs> shooting a torpedo. The Rock gets out of a car while yep. they're driving on the ice and uses his hand to push the torpedo towards another vehicle. Like, what are, where are we as a society where this is acceptable? My guilty pleasure is the John Wick movies. Yes, and, and, but those and, are awesome. Though. Those are but, no, but, but here's the thing. I, I, I mean, I, I'll be fair. I will critique <laughs> My the, guilty the is Avengers. insane <laughs> physics of what's going on in the Fast and Furious, and I won't. I'll watch four John Wick movies and be like, eh, "None of those people could like, you know, get barely even like a shot to the neck or the head." Yeah. Like the fact that all these people are aiming at like Keanu Reeves's outer garments. <laughs> like again, statistics: the number of times it's going to catch up to you, buddy. But you know what? At the same time, though, like, the, like it is true that like fans like we need to be honest and be able to be like self-critical. The people that are the diehards who are. DC can't do no wrong. Marvel can't do no wrong. This can't do this. Fast, this can't do Fast that. Fast Five can't. That, yeah. Fast Furious can't do wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, like, let's, let's, let's be real here. Like, these movies we're talking about, they're not going to win. They're not going to win Academy Awards for uh, Best Direction, Best no. Screenplay, uh, Best Sound. Um, you know, well, they, they, might get lucky with, they might get lucky with costume or something sure. like that. That's visual effects. Yeah. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, these movies, they just, they print money more, like enough yeah. people are going to them that like we, they've even done a spinoff of the fast. Yeah, Hobbs and, movies. Hobbs and Shaw. Calvin, Calvin Hobbs and, Hobbs? I think it was oh, Hobbs and Locke. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's Echo and Server, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, X versus Seven. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. FF, right? Yeah, some, something of, of that, of that. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't even know. I, I may watch Fast Ten just for don't the just for the uh, or maybe I'll go back and I'll go I'll go uh, eight 
and then I'll wait for 11 and I'll just keep watching uh, every three or so, you know, just to, just to keep, just to see if those movies make sense so, together. So Roman's theory of the Fast and Furious movies is that he's going to watch them based on the Fibonacci sequence. Yes, yes. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just see it spiral out, it'll be totally fine, kids. Oh, oh, do you want to do our fast favorite movie cars real quick? Oh, Let's do that real quick. Since we're, since we're talking bad movie cars, okay. which I mean, the car, it's not the car's fault. It's, right. it's, it's, it's the operator. Uh, so, Eric, why don't you start us off? No, no, no. You go. Oh, my God. No, I mean, we can just, I mean, you. let's talk Ecto-1. That's just an awesome movie car. Sure. It's iconic. Sure. I I will say uh, a wink to my lady, Christine, you know? Hey, uh, I love that, it, that, dude. That might be my, my favorite movie car. Uh, right. You know, you treat her right. She'll mm-hmm. take care of you. She'll kill your, bad, your, your enemies. But you start disrespecting her. She will poison you slowly in a vehicle. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Big Tuna, give us something that's that, that that we didn't that we didn't think of. Dude, mine's so based. Uh, it's the DeLorean. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, every like honestly, like I like I genuinely, genuinely love the DeLorean. Uh, it's one of those things where if I was a millionaire, like if I won yeah. the lottery, my first buy would be like a restored or like a, a like a model yeah. version of a DeLorean. Heck uh, yeah. It may drive terribly, but like the just the door opening, like you know, yeah. like it would just be. It's so iconic. It's so um, it's so intertwined with a movie that I love since my childhood. That like genuinely like it's just it's got such a, a special place in my heart. And you'd be able to make one that actually runs well. Now, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like technology is where it's at that they can fabricate a really nice uh, you know fake Lord. frame, but. I would want an original. Absolutely. I, I, I don't even need to drive. Well, I mean, that's the collector in you. Yeah, yeah. I would want an original. I would get a Batmobile. I would get Batmobile's a, great. I would get a kit. I would get. Um, but what Batmobile? Um, the Tumbler for me. No, <laughs> no, Roman doesn't like the Tumbler. I don't like the Tumbler. Yeah. For me, it would. Of the of of all of my issues with Batman yes. eighty nine. You can't mess that, with that Batmobile. It's the, the Batmobile. It looks closest to the to the uh, animated series sure. one. Obviously, it has that big circle yep. thing in the middle, but it has that spoiler. feel. Uh, is, is it a spoiler? Mm-hmm. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Oh, You're talking about the thing with the exhaust? Thing. No, no, in the back. In oh, the, the front. The front. front. Oh, never mind. It's yeah. not a spoiler. It's in like every picture of the movie. Yeah. This? Yeah. Um, I will say, though, I just threw the Ecto-1 out there, but my favorite movie car is from the movie Vanishing Point. It's a 1970 Dodge Charger. Mm. Vanishing Point um, stars Barry Newman, kind of an obscure actor. Okay. Uh, the movie basically is this, uh, he's a guy who has to get the Dodge Charger from San Francisco to Denver. Ah. Um, and he has 12 hours to do it. So he's hired by this guy to do it. So he stops by his local biker bar, takes a bunch of speed, and goes on a high-speed chase for eight hours with some police officers having to dodge them. And uh, Cleavon Little from... Uh, Blazing Saddles fame, plays a blind DJ who uh, basically is the guy, his eyes on the road. Mm-hmm. He gives him reports on where the police are hiding. He uses uh. code, calls him Blue Meanies. Uh. Um, I won't spoil the ending, but the movie is is so awesome. Yeah. And it made me want, it made me really appreciate muscle cars uh. and the freedom of the highway and getting kind of the, getting a little Kerouac on everybody, you know, and drugs are awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess the, for uh, a last one for me would be the Impala from from Supernatural, that would be really <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah bro, bro. Get yeah, myself yeah. a little baby, you know? Yeah, 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 of course. Um, children, that is our show. If you like what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button. Let us know what you think of the show below. Uh, which car would you be interested in getting? Are you a big Fast and the Furious fan? Explain yourself. Um, Eric? I, that. Uh, um, I want the car from Driving Miss Daisy. I don't know what it is. Don't don't let him do this. But I want a hoke with it. Don't let him do this. All right. Big Tuna, any fresh takes? Dude, I totally have a fresh take. There's an actor who's been around Hollywood for a long time. I thought of him when you mentioned Spider-Man Homecoming. He's the guy who played the Shocker in uh, the movie. Yeah, Bokeem Woodbine. Yeah, Bokeem Woodbine. Man, this guy's filmography. I'm just going to shoot off a few movies that you may not have realized he's been in. Dead Presidents, a great 90s action Jason's movie. Jason's a lyric. Dude, The Rock. Uh, mm-hmm. Almost Heroes, super underrated. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Chris Farley. Yeah, Chris Farley, last movie. 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Uh, Ray, Black Dynamite, one of the best mm-hmm. uh, One of the best uh, Michael J. White uh, movies ever. Wasn't he black? Uh, uh, Riddick, no, no. Um, and then yeah, Spider-Man: Homecoming, uh, and he was the sheriff of the small town in Ghostbusters: Afterlife. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's the one who says, "Who are you gonna call?" He was also in uh, uh, Life with. Uh, he was in Life. That's yep, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, just tell me how impressed you were that I knew who, what his name was. <laughs> I was really impressed. Actually, yeah. There you go, <laughs> kids. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I have been your host, Roman Chavez. I'm Bokeem Woodbine. And for the big tuna, we will see you on the next podcast.